Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tech Talk. I am Jennifer Cooper with Focus 360, and I'm excited to introduce our guest today, Kevin Oakley with Do You Convert? I think he is no stranger to the industry. And today we're going to talk about everything marketing for 2024. We're absolutely in planning season. Hopefully most of you are out of planning season and have your strategy and your budget already geared up, but we know um, procrastination haunts all of us, and you may be still thinking through what 2024 looks like for you. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So without further ado, welcome, and thank you for joining me today, Kevin. Absolutely. I feel like this next year has been harder for people to think about planning for than it has been in a long time. So I think it's a definitely relevant topic to dive Kick into. Kick off today. <laughs> Awesome. Well, again, like I said, we know it's been planning season. Um, we were talking about budgets and uh, I was actually at the housing uh, transformation summit just a couple of weeks ago. And we had um, Janet Benavidez from Shea Homes talking about her marketing mix and what do you put into digital and how do you then pull apart the digital marketing strategy? So we'd love to just kick off candidly and hear your feedback on how you're advising builders to comprise their marketing mix for 2024. Yeah, the mix is going to be more digital than ever, of course. And so what that means is how do we make room? Because the first round of growth in digital, it was all about taking money away from things that were underperforming or were losing uh, their value and reinvesting it. But it was oftentimes either net neutral in dollars or it was actually a cost savings. You're like, great, we don't have to spend... 15 grand every weekend in the newspaper. So now this digital thing seems like a great opportunity. Well, yeah. as that's matured, that's really no longer the case. And so the the biggest, I think, challenge that people have is deciding whether they're going to really become a content producer at the scale necessary to get the consumer's attention and keep it. Mm -hmm. And it's not a matter of money, it's a matter of process, partnerships, et cetera, of, you know, like, I've looked at several builder budgets over the last couple of weeks who are looking at working with us in 2024. And one of them had a line item for content that they had spent in 2023. And the total was less than $2,000. This is a builder doing over 200 homes a year. And uh, they had done one rendering was a sub line item on there. I think it was $250, but that was all that they had spent on content. And then another builder is like, well, I've got $200,000 budgeted for content but I only spent 20,000 of it. And it's because there's this lack of confidence of being able to produce. Mm -hmm. And that's a question that everyone has to decide uh, re realistically, what are you gonna look like for next year? Mm -hmm. Because ads are going to get more expensive. Uh, it, right. It's just going to happen. The competitiveness has never been greater on the digital front. And so I used to do kind of two different budget breakouts, Jen. One was building a new website, not building a new website as kind of the main differentiator between scenario A and scenario B. Now I really feel like scenario A is we're going to continue marketing more or less as we have, but try to do it better. Mm -hmm. And the other is we're going to really focus on creating uh, the content to get and keep the consumer's attention from an organic social uh, uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be a good thing to help people justify creating that process. Um, but ads are going to be more expensive. So search is going to continue to be uh, number one in priority, but also expense, unfortunately, because we know the consumer's intent. They're typing in the right terms. Uh, there's no question what the consumer is doing or looking for. Social obviously is going to be a, a second from an advertising standpoint and syndication third most broadly. But yeah. The, the content word has never been kind of looming larger. And the, yeah. the number of builders who have done a little bit of it, obviously, much better. But the ones who have really committed and produced consistently is still really, really small. I think the biggest challenge, yeah, co content is king. We always say that. Video is king. Always say that. But it's like, no, it's, it's really king. And I, I, think, I think marketers, having been on the builder side, you, you've been on the builder side, there's so many things, so many hats we're juggling. And depending on the size of your team, you're also trying to figure out, well, how do I spend time to compartmentalize and focus on the content versus like 
just let me put it push out another e glass. Let me just make sure I get this event done. Let me yeah. get my signage done. So when they say they have to have a content strategy, they have to think about how am I showing up in search? How am I showing up in all of these different ways that my information is being scraped? Um, it, it, you know, what what are those keywords? How are they changing? What are my competitors doing? And that's a I think I think they struggle with with the time. So I think working with you know a firm like you that has maybe the resources to, to say how are we managing, how are we auditing, how are we building and layering on to that content strategy is yeah. key. And I would just say they, they need to be making more time for it than they do. Otherwise, that twenty two hundred or two thousand or twenty thousand of the two hundred thousand dollar budget is only getting touched, right? Well, because I, I do follow a lot of a lot of your content um, about builders spending more money going into yeah. 2024. And this is, as you and I know, it's hard. We have, to, we have to go into the boardroom and say, why do we want a 10% increase? Why do we want a 20% increase? Um, hopefully it's an easier sell if we know that that increase in production is going up by a certain percentage that we've got more communities. But sometimes they say, well, why, why do you need more? Because of X, Y, Z. Um, would love kind of your your recap or your, your yeah. thoughts on going into 2024 and spend. The, the recap there is Elman and Associates did an analysis of all of the public home builders and advertising spend. So marketing, bigger category, but advertising in particular. And from 1999 until 2011, 1% to 1.3% was kind of the average range. And then we fast forward to COVID, the average uh, investment level in 2021 seems almost unreal is 0.3%. Now, 0.3 of billions of dollars of revenue is still a lot of money. So, you know, don't get distracted that. But the trend is absolutely going to increase and go the other direction. We're already seeing it. We saw it last year in the fourth quarter. It's here this year in the fourth quarter where um, there are builders out there uh, who we can tell are, are happy to pay $9 a click in some markets for search terms. Mm -hmm. $9 is like... Nine times what the yeah. average historically has been. That's just a, it's a definition of the pain of those builders and their desperation. Yeah. And for the publics, we can afford it. So no big deal. The competitive landscape will continue to um, be tougher and more expensive. And again, that's where uh, if you've invested and and done different things when times were good, then you do have this chance to kind of leapfrog and create further separation with your competition. But if you've just been kind of like, hey, let's just put that cash uh, in the bank and, and not really reinvesting in, in better processes and systems and ways to communicate with the customer, there's no direction it can really go but up. And yeah. without, again, disclosing anything, there there are several large multi-state builders who are already planning to be you know, above that 1% margin again for next year. Doesn't mean you have to use it, by the way. Uh, that's the, if you want to gain credibility with your leadership team, having a track record of saying what I get a budget approved for and what I actually spend are not one and the same. Correct. Right? So it's yep. it's okay to get, you know, fight yes. and get that budget where you think you might need to be and then come in under. We're absolutely used to juggling the budget and moving things around. So um, that's an absolutely great point. I think it's really interesting. Yeah, you see $9 a click, $6 a click, $1 a click. The other thing to keep in mind that as our media landscape gets noisier, I'm seeing conversions um, across some of my, my digital partnerships where you're seeing someone come to the site 30, 40, 60, 85 times. Yeah. Going through all of the maze and all of the crazy funnel, which is more circular than it is a cone any any day, any any time yeah. these days. And um we have to we have we have to pay more for that opportunity because of the noise. So we have to prepare for that. Low Absolutely. point. Yeah. I, I, I know anyway what the low point of, of average builder traffic is gonna be for the entire year, which occurs, you know, Christmas yeah. uh, day. And it typically mirrors right along what Thanksgiving is. And that low is still higher or on par with every one of the past four years. So even 2020, 2021, it's it's right on 2022, it's right on par there, which yeah. means again, it's good news. Consumers are still housing obsessed. They still want to, to look and dream and explore. But to your point, that is expensive. The longer they're taking to shop and to look, the more times 
you're potentially paying to get them to come back. Yes, exactly. But Especially again, if you don't have that organic content that just makes them want to come back to see the new episode, right. to see the new video, to see the new content. Yes, or to have the new engaging tools on your website that are keeping them coming back playing. Like, exactly. What do they keep coming back to? And are, are we retargeting? What's what's driving them back in the funnel? Or are they coming back by choice? I think is another. Also, real quick before I forget, the average time on site, uh, partly because of the tools that you're talking about, I think, is gone just through the roof. <laughs> builder yesterday, average time, and this is a large, I mean, thousand home year builder, average time on the website is set over seven minutes. Yes. I and mean, that's. Programs, and all of the video tours and playing with their options, all of those things <laughs> mm -hmm. make you want to experience it more. Think about building your car. If you're going to build a car, you're going to build your Tesla online. I'm not going to be doing that in 30 seconds or a minute, 30 seconds, right? <laughs> yeah, no. So since I've got you, I know we try to keep this relatively short, but I want to talk to you about AI. I'm curious what you guys are doing um, on the forefront. Again, this came up at the Housing Transformation Summit uh, in Phoenix just a couple of weeks ago, where we're talking about, you know, you can yell out to your Alexa device, or your Google device to help get you information on the billboards. They're scraping information. AI is now scraping information of that content we talked about to feed information to chat GPT and things of that nature. And we have to be really cognizant as home builders about how we're showing up. So I'm curious what your teams, your team is doing with other builders to, I, I feel like this is a whole nother area of study and strategy to be on top of that could really get, pull the rug out from under our feet. So, so much of a, of a floor plan's information is stuck within the floor plan drawing. Meaning there is no product detail specification like you would find on any other product you were looking at online that said, you know, here's just a grid of every bedroom's dimensions. If, no, if you want to know the bedroom dimensions, sorry, you got to go back and look at the floor plan. Well, that's obviously AI can look at a floor plan and tell room dimensions, but it can't tell what's not displayed there. Mm -hmm. And so there's just a ton of information that uh, isn't ready. You know, does this floor plan include a tankless hot water heater or not. Mm. It, basically, there's a whole other thing that I, I know at Focus 360 and, and companies like it, you all have to deal with of how is the consumer supposed to know when they're on a floor plan page, all the stuff that's actually on a whole other part of the website, meaning it, yeah. like, and the about us is where you learn about the warranty. But if you just go to a floor plan page, is there yeah. a warranty? I don't even, I don't know. What's the benefit of all this stuff being new? Yeah. So I think that's the most important thing to understand is um, none of this stuff is really thinking yet. It's not going to make critical decisions. And the more, I mean, like anything, it's magical the first couple of times you use it. You use it for a couple of months and you're like, this isn't as magical as I wished it would be yet. But it's going to keep going there. But you make sure your own data and your own house is in order yes. and you'll be able to catch up with anyone. I mean, that's that's the encouraging thing. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people felt like they were going to be left behind if they didn't keep moving forward. You're going to get left behind if your data is not in, in, in the right uh, framework right. to be used. Yes, I yeah. understand. No, I to totally agree. I keep saying AI uh, is, is it's an infant, right? And we're not giving it running shoes to go run through the house. It's, you know, you gotta, it, it's an infant. So just be careful how we use it, what to expect from it, but to watch it. Cause like anything else, it will get better. Exactly. Well, I, I'd love to end my last question for you is because uh, I know you've got them and you kind of alluded to it a little bit, but any predictions for what the start of selling season is going to look like this year? I feel like the last three years it's thrown, it's been a little bit inconsistent or maybe thrown us for a loop um, based off of yeah. the quantity and based off what's going on in the world. So what are your predictions for uh, the first of the year? Man, I hope I'm right. I think, I think, well, first of all, there's always a spring selling season. That's my, again, sure. the thing I always love to remind people, even in 07, and 08, and 09, February, March, and April, where the builders that I was at, there was never a concern of, are we going to sell enough homes to keep the doors open? That was just was never, it still was a spring selling season. So it's coming, and I think it's going to be really, really good this year, especially if builders have made adjustments to what type of inventory homes they are building, the size, the included features. Um, I, I, I think it's going to be stronger than most people expect, but I think it might also be shorter. What we've seen is that, um, the amplitude of the market, I think this is the right terminology, like the size of the change 
yeah. is, is still amazing. But oftentimes it's been shorter. We're like new home selling season in, in my mind is like that was only a month and a half. It used to be like four months long. And now builders are selling out of all their inventory really quickly, then they don't have any, then it's hard. So yeah. I think that still could be the case, but it's going to be good for as long as it lasts. Yeah, I agree. Totally agree. I think there's some, some pent up demand and a lot of people are waiting for after the holidays with just some of the changes in rates and a lot of web activity says so. Um, so I agree. Fingers crossed, right, for our industry friends. Well, I want to thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, love your insights, you love your point of view. Uh, if nobody is connected with Mr. Kevin with you convert, please do so. He is a wealth of knowledge for our industry. And thank you everyone for tuning in today to Tech Talk. We'll see you at the next episode. Bye-bye. Thanks again.